Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today with a gingerbread house shaped card featuring honeybee stamps and dies. Several months ago, Honeybee Stamps came out with the House Builder dies, and at the time, I shared a traditional style house, kind of an any occasion kind of house, and a Halloween house with the Halloween add-ons. They have come out with the gingerbread house add-ons, and I thought, what better time to share a holiday card than the holiday season? I absolutely adore this die set, and I really kind of stuck mostly to die cuts for my card. Um, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, I kind of like to stick with die cuts with die cuts, um, at least for this style of card, meaning I don't really prefer to mix in like the stamped elements, which is really fantastic with this particular set because you can um, totally use die cuts or you could use the stamps and the dies. There's both in the die collection. I am starting by adding some color to my house with the absolutely fantastic salvaged bricks stencil. And I'm using a little bit of the Pink Fresh Studio Misty Coast ink to add that color to my house with a blending brush. Look how amazing this is. This is Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock. It is this, the very palest of gray cardstock. And I'm also gonna do the eaves on the house. Um, I'm gonna have two on this particular house design. I went all out, y'all. Um, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I really decorated this house all up for the holidays, which is my favorite thing to do. I, I absolutely love embellishing, and so I felt it was really important to do everything I could to embellish here. And I'm so sorry my head's in the way. I was trying to get my stencil lined up. I tried to do both at once, and I found out real quick that wasn't going to work, so I'm going to do them one at a time. Now, if the salvaged bricks is not your thing and you want a little bit more of that perfect type of brick look, there is the perfect bricks stencil, there's shiplap, and there's also a couple of different options for roofs. So if you want to decorate your house with stencils, they Honeybee Stamps has got you covered. And this extends beyond just Honeybee Stamps house, uh, house dies. I am going to be sharing, if you've got other house dies, especially house dies, in your collection, I'm going to share uh, using some of these stencils with those as well because I think they're just phenomenal. They are sized to work fantastic with our die cut houses. I am ready to start putting it all together. I did die cut everything off camera. I did this on purpose. This is um, a lot of die cutting. I'll be real with you, the die cutting took a little bit. Um, probably took me oh, an hour. Uh, and that's just because it's a lot of switching back and forth. And of course, I was thinking about, you know, what do I want to use? What color do I want to use? And that kind of thing. But really, I highly recommend die cutting and then assembling. It just kind of streamlines the process. I love die cutting it all, laying it all out, and then starting to assemble the project. So um, that's just my recommendation. You totally can do whatever you want to do because it's your card. But um, for me, I find that that really just kind of helps me visualize what I need. And oftentimes I'm like, for example, these windows. I die cut the window part, I stenciled it, and I'm like, where's the rest of it? Where's the window casing? You know, the little uh, peak there. And I forgot to die cut it, and I realized, oh, I need that piece. So it will often help lead to what else do I need? When I was laying out the card, how many wreaths do I want for windows and doors? Um, I originally kind of only had a couple, and then I was like, nah, I think we need them on the door and all of the windows. Um, it gave me a good idea of, you know, where I wanted to put candy canes and gumdrops and all the things. Now, I love in the gingerbread house add-on that there is the snow feature for like the windows and the top of the house and the top of the chimney. 
For that, I die cut some white glitter cardstock and then glued that in place because I really, really like that look. And I'm working pretty much from the top down, if that makes sense. And I'm using a combination of dies from both the house builder, so that's the original set, and that is the house, um, that's the windows. I'm trying to think what else we got so far from the original house. I think that might be it. This roof and the chimney, and then of course the wreaths, the circle window, any of the snowy, icy stuff, that's all from the gingerbread house add-on. And I can't believe I forgot to mention this, but this card fits in a regular A2 sized envelope. My favorite thing about this is that it's big, but it still fits in a traditional A2 sized envelope. So you're getting an awesome shaped card that would look fantastic on the mantle. Um, this is also not a card I would create, you know, multiples of. Maybe a couple, but definitely I wouldn't create this, you know, 50 or 100 of these to mail out. This is definitely a card for somebody special, um, but I think it's well worth it and it's so beautiful when it's done. The only pattern paper on my card is the curtains in the window here, which I know they kind of get covered up with the wreath, but I think all these little touches are super important. That is from the Holiday Traditions Honeybee Stamps 6x6 paper pad. I love this paper pad. Patterns, most of the patterns in the pad are sized that they're going to work great with the dies. Um, any dies you have in your stash. And I have used this particular pattern paper because the curtains are so teeny tiny. This was literally a small scrap left over from two bigger projects that I've created using the same pattern paper. So when I find a pattern paper I love, and this red and white plaid is definitely one of those, I use every teeny tiny little bit. And I just kind of hold on to them because things like the curtains for windows this works great. The window casing itself is from the house builder. The scallop, the shutters, and the wreath and bow are all from the gingerbread house add-on, and the curtains are from the house builder. So you really do need both sets, but I am just crazy about the fact that Honeybee Stamps keeps bringing out add-ons for the original. So we've got the Halloween add-on, which makes the cutest spooky houses. And then we've got the gingerbread add-on, which makes all kinds of fantastic holiday type houses. So I can't wait to see what they come out with next because I just think this is absolutely phenomenal and one of my very favorite things. The door handle, also from the original house builder set, it is super, super teeny tiny. The die is super teeny tiny. Um, I keep them on a magnetic sheet in a clear plastic folder is how I store mine because some of these dies are super small. The stairs are from the house builder, but that rounded door, the window, the scallop, all from the gingerbread house add-on. So I hope this really shows how these two sets work interchangeably with one, of, one another to create awesome cards. I think right here, where you see all the wreaths on the windows, it really shows how that one tiny little thing makes a huge difference. It definitely was a little, I mean, oh, I hate to say, oh my gosh, it was so much extra work, but it was extra work die cutting those multiple times. And I have a tendency, I'm like, oh, we just need a couple. But as I kept adding them to my card, I really saw the difference. And I think it's important to note that sometimes repetition in a design it is just the thing that's needed to elevate it up to another level. Now the candy cane, that's a tricky thing. Okay, so I die cut it from both red and white cardstock. It has the stitching lines, but it doesn't actually have the layering pieces. So in order to create red and white candy canes, because I really felt like that they needed to be red and white, and I didn't want to color a white candy cane or anything like that, I wanted it to all be die cuts, I am taking my red candy cane, that's going to be the base, and I'm going to 
trim apart my white candy cane with scissors and just glue the white pieces onto the red candy cane base. Even though this looks like it's kind of a, a hassle, this was one of the quickest things I did. It really wasn't a big deal. I simply just add a little bit of glue, snipped it apart every other, and used a crystal katana to pick up those little pieces and pop them in place to really finish off these candy canes and make them shine. I will be popping them up with foam adhesive on either side of the front porch. And then we're gonna finish them with a layer of Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard, which is gonna give them that glittery finish it, that's just perfect. We're gonna be giving those gumdrops some, a little finish of White Blizzard too, because they're gumdrops. They need to look like they've been dipped in sugar, right? So um, just little finishing touches like that. You, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that those finishing touches and embellishments are totally my jam. It is my favorite part of designing is finding ways to elevate my cards with finishing details. I absolutely love it. So we're kind of getting to the end of the front of our card. We have a few little extra things. I am using an acrylic block to hold those flat. One of those extra things is adding a little stamping to our front door. So actually the only stamp that I am using from the Gingerbread House stamp set, this Gingerbread House add-on stamp set, is this cute little Santa's workshop sentiment that I'm stamping below the wreath on the door with clear embossing ink and I'll heat emboss with white embossing powder. Now, I know I said at the beginning of the video, I chose to do all die cuts. If you don't choose to do all die cuts and you want to mix and match, there is a sleigh, there's a gingerbread boy and girl, a hat, um, all kinds of different window options, candy canes that you can actually stamp and color. There's the coordinating dies for those. Um, that's what I'm saying. And gum, there's gumdrops, peppermints, packages, uh, trees, light posts, mailbox. Uh, a chimney, a shutter, you know, holly and berries, snowflakes. Guys, there's all the things. This stamp set is phenomenal. Um, super, super cute and gives you a whole bunch more options. What I love is that in the dies, you get the options for die cuts and then you get the options for like the outline for the stamps. So you're getting both depending on what you want to do. To pop my candy canes up, if you want to create a curved edge, remove, I like to use these thin ad, uh, foam adhesive strips, they're fantastic. If you remove both sides of backing paper from that, you can wrap it around a curved edge. But you have to remove both sides of the, you know, peel it off the, the sheet and then remove the other side, the backing paper. And then it'll curve around the shape. So this works really, really well. I'm gonna just trim that up. The little bit of dimension by the front door helps just with, there's so much going on. It's just gonna help pop them up a little bit. And I should mention, I did do this off camera. The steps that I put there down below the front door, that I actually did put a little tiny piece of fun foam underneath it as well to help hold it flat because it was really flapping around. The door doesn't go quite down to the bottom just because I felt like this looked better. So there is a little piece of foam adhesive behind the steps as well. Every other gumdrop I am popping up with a uh, foam adhesive square from Scrapbook Adhesives, just using the small size. Again, that coordinates nicely with our dimensional candy canes and gives a little bit of dimension to those gumdrops along the bottom edge of the house. And we are almost done. You might notice that off camera at some point I did trim off the excess snowfall hanging off the edge of the roof. So we got rid of that. The shutters are hanging out a little bit past the house. That is no problem as long as it doesn't go past the the angle of the roof there. It's going to fit in your A2 size card base or envelope, pardon me. So we are all good. That gave me the perfect spacing for everything, um, the door and all of that. Once I have everything in place, I do not wanna do 
any embellishing with anything liquid, glossy accents, Nouveau crystal drops, I don't want to do that until I have assembled my card. And the way to assemble the card is there's a front and a back and then there's a connector piece. And I'm going to connect that here in a second. If you want to add any stamping on the inside, which I often like to because the front of my card, I usually like to leave just the house. Um, I know we put the Santa's workshop, but it's just a whole scene. Um, I really like to kind of leave my sentiment for the inside. We're going to use a sentiment or a couple of sentiments rather from the Honey Bee Stamps Christmas Blessings stamp set. And we're going to, I masked off part, like the little flourishes above the Merry Christmas. I'm not going to stamp those. And I stamped Merry Christmas with the Lawn Fawn Lobster Red Ink. And then we're going to stamp the phrase from our family to yours in Pink Fresh Studio Olive Ink underneath that. So for a two-tone sentiment inside the card. So we stamped our inside panel while it's still flat. Then we're going to take the connector piece and I'm putting double sided adhesive on both sides of the tab. I like to use a bone folder to make sure it's on there good. I'm just going to use something sharp to peel that up. And we are attaching the front and back pieces to that little tab and that makes our shaped card, you guys. And when I open it up, you can kind of see that connector. But I like to just die cut it the same color as my panels and I think it just is beautiful and seamless. I am ready to start the embellishment process. So that's going to be some Nouveau crystal drops, that's going to be some glossy accents, um, just different things and different colors of things throughout. And my magnets got caught to me. So there, I'm just gonna pop open the card so you can see that. All right, this is Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard. So we're gonna start with the sparkly sugar covered things first. And of course the gumdrops from the very beginning, I knew that I wanted to do red and green gumdrops and that I wanted them to be sparkly. And I apologize, my container of Nouveau Crystal Drops keeps clogging, so I'm using a straight pin to unclog it. Kind of a hassle, but hey, uh, I wanted this certain look, so I went ahead and did it anyway. And this is going to dry nice and clear, and it's just going to look like they've been rolled in sugar. They won't have that milky look to them that they have when the product is wet. Then I'm going to just decorate with some little white dots on the roof. Just um, in each of the little scallops, I'm gonna put little dabs of glossy, or pardon me, of Nouveau Crystal Drops in gloss white, and adds a great decorative touch. And I'm just gonna kinda slowly go through and add all of these little drops. You're definitely going to want to let your card set and completely dry for a good 24 hours when you're done. It'll probably be dry to the touch within an hour or two, but I would highly recommend just letting it set and completely dry. I decided before I finished with my white drops, I was going to take glossy accents and I'm going to put that on each of the bows. I want the bows to stand out a little bit more and I want them to have that glossy raised finish and glossy accents is perfect for that. So we're just doing the bows with the glossy accents. Almost makes them look like stickers, um, little bow stickers. And then on the wreaths, I used Nouveau Crystal Drops and Red Berry to make little dots on the wreaths to dress those up as well. We're going to finish the roof now. And you can see the candy canes. See how I haven't put anything on them yet? I like them, but I don't think they stand out quite as much as I, as I want them to. And that's why I did come back at the end and add the White Blizzard Nouveau Crystal Drops to those because I think having them have that sugary finish is cute. I think they'd also look cute in glossy accents. Um, I contemplated both, but ultimately just decided on the White Blizzard Nouveau Crystal Drops. And I've turned my card upside down to keep my hand out of anything that I have already done that might still be wet, because let's face it, I have a propensity to drag my hand through uh, 
product when it's wet, so I try to eliminate that whenever possible. Okay, that is going to finish up our car design today. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this gingerbread house shaped card featuring honeybee stamps and dies. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring honeybee stamps and dies, including some other ideas for using the house builder that I mentioned earlier in the video. So if you want some other ideas of what you can make with the house builder cards, here's one of those videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you never miss a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Happy holidays and we'll catch you next time.